In this video, I will teach you how to make this exact simulation in Blender. As always, it is going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so press X to delete the cube, and then press Shift A and add a cylinder, and then press R, Y, then 90, and then S, then X to scale it on the X axis. And then next, we need to uh, apply the transformations, so press Shift A and apply. And then we can press N and add a driver for the X rotation. So right click and go to add driver. And then we will set the rotation of the cylinder as a function of the movement on the Y axis. And then because uh, we have a cylinder with a diameter of uh, two units, as you can see when we measure, you will see that the function in this case will be very easy to set up. So uh, we can press uh, G, then Y, grab it on the Y axis, and you can see that it goes in the wrong direction. So right click and then edit driver. And we're going to set a minus sign in front of the variable. And then the function is 2 divided by the diameter. And in this case, it's 2 divided by 2, which is just 1. So we get the correct rotation of the cylinder with just minus 1 variable. In the case that you have a different diameter for your wheel or cylinder, let's try 4.72 for example. And then edit the driver, we just said 2 divided by 4.72. And when I press G, then uh, Y, you can see that it works correctly. Okay, so I'm going to undo and go back to the uh, first cylinder. And then we can save before we continue. So I uh, just give it a name. And then save. Okay, and then next we can go into edit mode. So tab for edit mode, face selection, hold in shift and select the faces on each side and then set the mean increase value to 1, so that when you add the subdivision surface modifier, you can see that these faces stay flat. And then we can add some uh, shade smooth as well. And then we can go to normals and enable auto smooth, so that the faces stay flat once again. You can then press shift A and add a plane as the scale. And then press G set, then minus 1, to move it one unit on the z-axis. And then press Shift A. And then we're going to add the uh, cubes. And I'm just going to move it slightly upwards on the uh, z-axis. And then you can press G, then Y to move it on the y-axis. And then I'm going to uh, scale it up. So press S to scale and then press G, then set, to grab it on the z-axis. And then before we duplicate the cube, we can add the rigid body physics. So rigid body, and then the type is active, I'm going to set the mass to 100 kilos, and set the collision shape to box, since this is a cube. And then I'm going to decrease the friction slightly and uh, go down to dynamics and edit the damping translation and rotation. These are of course just um, arbitrary numbers and what I found to look the best in a simulation. So just experiment with the different values and uh, see what you like. And next, I'm going to duplicate the cube, so press Shift-D, then Set, to move the duplication on the z-axis, and then press Shift-R to repeat the previous actions. Okay, so now we have uh, five cubes, and I think I'm going to scale them down a bit. So hold in Shift to select multiple objects, and then press S to uh, scale them down. And then press G, then set, to grab them on the z-axis. 
Okay, so now we have the cubes with active rigid body physics. And then the next step is to select the plane and add passive rigid body physics to that plane. And then set the collision shape to mesh. And then I'll set the friction to one. And then you can press space. And as you can see, the physics work. So I'm just going to save one more time. And then we can animate the uh, cylinder. So I'm going to go to frame 30 so that the cubes have some time to fall down before the animation starts. And then I'm going to uh, press I to keyframe the location. And then we can go 30 frames forward and then press G, then Y to grab it on the Y axis. And then press I to keyframe. And then I'm going to go 30 frames forward again, go back to the original position. So press I to keyframe. Okay, and then we're going to duplicate these keyframes. So let's go into the graph editor. And then press A to select everything. And then press Shift D, X, then 60. And then press Shift R to repeat the previous actions. As you can see, we now have a looping animation. And then next, we need to add some passive rigid body physics to the cylinder. So let's set the type to passive, and then the shape to cylinder, and then set the friction to one. And then make sure that it's set to animated because uh, we have animated the cylinder. As you can see, the uh, collision shape is kind of messed up, so I'm just going to set it to mesh instead. And the uh, simulation works great. So uh, the next step will be, of course, to create another save. And then we can bake the physics simulation under rigid body world. And then set the number of sub steps per frame to 100 to improve the quality of the simulation. And then bake the simulation. And as you can see, the simulation looks good. And if you want the cylinder to stop at the end, we can just delete the uh, last keyframe, press X to delete, delete the bake, and then bake again. As you can see, it stops at the end. And now that we have the simulation set up, we set up the light and materials. So I'm going to turn this light into a sun, set the strength to five, and then you can press R twice to rotate the sun freely. So something like this. And then we can add a uh, background image as well. So open. And I will provide a link to free HRIs in the description. And then we can go into rendered view. As you can see, we have both the background image and the sun. And for simulations like this, I prefer cycles because it looks way more realistic with the shadows and so on, and set the number of samples to 300. I'm also going to rotate the uh, sun a bit so that we uh, avoid that line. And then next, we can make the background completely transparent. Let's go to Film, and then enable Transparent. And then next, we're going to add a node-based shader for the cylinder. So let's go into the shader editor, and then add a new material. And then I'm going to delete the principal shader. So X to delete, and press Shift A. Let's just add a simple diffuse shader to simplify. 
And then next, we can add a noise texture. So press Shift A, and then search noise texture. And then we will connect color to color. And then in between, we can add a color ramp to control the color of the noise. I'm going to set it around 0.466, and then the roughness to 1, and then set the uh, distortion to a uh, negative value. You can of course experiment with these values later, once we have set up all the notes. Okay, and then next, we can uh, press Shift A, and add a muscular texture, and then connect the height to the scale, so that we get this interesting pattern. And then play around with the different variables until you have a pattern that you like. So something like this. And then you can play around with the colors as well. I'm going to make it look something like this. And then we can add a glassy material for the plane. So uh, let's decrease the roughness. And I'm also going to make it darker. Okay. I think this looks nice. And then next, we need to add a texture to the uh, cubes. So let's save before we continue. Go to the first frame, add a uh, new material. For this material, I'm going to add an image texture node with a uh, wooden texture. So uh, add the uh, image texture node, connect color to base color, open, and you will find a link to the texture in the description. As you can see, I selected the wrong one first when I added the texture. So uh, it's the kitchen wood image texture. And then next, make sure that under preferences and add-ons, you have the node wrangler add-on enabled so that when you press control T, you will get the mapping and texture coordinates node. And then we can set the rotation value to 90 for the set axis so that the lines are vertical. And then add an object info node. And we're going to connect it later, but first let's add the same material to the rest of the cubes. So I'm just going to speed up this part. Okay. And then we can connect the randomness to the location so that each of the uh, cubes have uh, different locations for the image texture so that you get some variation. And then we can add some bright contrast as well to increase the uh, contrast. And then we're also going to mix this uh, material with another shader. Shift D to duplicate. And I'm also going to increase the roughness of uh, these shaders, but that's of course optional and then make the base color a bit orange so that when they are mixed, we get a nicer looking wooden texture. Okay, so now that we have the simulation and uh, materials set up, it is time to set up the camera. So to set up the camera, we can press Control Alt number zero to set the camera to the current point of view. And then I'm going to set the resolution to 2160 times 2160 to get a uh, square frame. And then you need to select a folder for the final render. We're going to render them as PNGs and then you can convert them to an MP4 file later. I have a tutorial on that on my channel. It's very simple. Now, before we end this tutorial, I'm just going to make one more change, and that is to change the size of the textures 
of the uh, cubes. So let's go back to solid view. And then I'm going to drag the top right corner of the window to create a uh, new one. Save one more time. And then let's go into the UV editor. Go to the first frame. And then select the first cube, press tab for edit mode. And then in the UV editor, press A to select everything, S, then 2, to scale it up two times. And then do the same for the rest of them. And that makes the texture smaller and more detailed. Okay, so uh, now we're pretty much done. And the last step is of course to uh, go to render and then render animation. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe for more.